But we'll move on to our second panel discussion for the day, and we'll be talking about tractor and farm equipment market outlook. Well, with a lot of changes converging at the same time, such as emission norms, connectivity, electrification, how is tractor and farm equipment expected to evolve in the coming two, three years? To shed more light on the subject, uh, please join me in welcoming on stage Mr. G.S. Greywal, Director of Sales, Marketing, NCS, Kubota uh, Agricultural Machinery, India. Joining him is Mr. Sudeep Tobasu, Executive Director, Emission Controls Manufacturers Association. Mr. Jujhar Singh Virk, President and Group Head Strategy and Growth Avenues at International Tractors Limited, Sonalika and Solis, is also joining on the panel. Thank you, five people, for that. Uh, I'll request for the rest of you all to kindly join me in welcoming Mr. Sanjay Sridhar, Head Purchasing and SQU Asia Pacific Region at CNH in Dry. Mr. Pradeep Rajan, Senior Principal Scientist at CSIR, Central Mechanical Engineering Research Institute at CMERI, is also joining us on the panel. And the moderator for the session is Mr. Rahul Bhargava, Director, Management Consulting, Automotive Sector, PwC India. So that's your panel, ladies and gentlemen. I'll request uh, Mr. Bhargava to take this conversation forward from here. So very good morning to all of you gentlemen. I think uh, very excited to be here uh, moderating this panel. Uh, and. Uh, <coughs> Very exciting topic here with us. I'm uh, uh, going to talk about how the future of tractor and farm equipment industry is going to look like uh, in the future. And, and with the kind of vast experience and knowledge that we have here on this stage, uh, I think our conversation is not going to be only interesting, but also very insightful. Is that so, a closer? We can't hear you. Okay. Thank you. So, um, what you want to do today is uh, basically take a journey through, a peek into the future, try and paint a picture of how some of the trends are going to shape up in the tractor industry, how, uh, what are the kind of opportunities that we should look forward to uh, in the future, uh, what are the kind of challenges that we can see, and what's the kind of solution that we emerge. So while uh, India is the largest market for tractors, I think it has its own unique characteristics, right? Um, the size of land, the uh, shortages of labor, uh, the kind of farm income that we have, the variety that we have in terms of application, soil, etc. So <clears throat> I think we're going to talk ab all about that. And uh, uh, with that, what uh, I would like to do is uh, begin with my first question to uh, Mr. Jujar. Uh, Mr. Jujar, um, I think let's start by looking at what's been happening in the market for the past uh, uh, couple of years. Uh, and uh, we know that a uh, lot of the farming practices are dependent on the, the different characteristics of the market that we have, right? So if you can share your views in terms of how have farming practices been in the past and how you see them shaping up in the future in the next uh, four to five years. What are some of the big shifts that you are going to see, uh, that you expect to see in the future? Good morning, <coughs> everyone. Oh, I think uh, today is a great platform. The guy I heard outside, okay, many of people <coughs> are from construction, <coughs> from the construction industry. So many of you might be have a new sector, uh, tractor industry. Uh, and today, why the tractor people are sitting here? Uh, the reason you all people know, uh, in the last year, it crossed turnover of commercial in terms of numbers also over uh, and is continuously a growing trend. So I will just brief about first the industry. Like last year in India, the all like nine lakh farmers uh, who took the bought the tractors from various manufacturers. And another the good thing about the industry there, because of a liability of manufacturing in India. 
you will surprise the country like german the country like french uk us they start accepting indian manufacturer tractors very well so you will surprise this year so far if you see ytm fab the growth in export <coughs> from india for tractor is 50% which is a very big and i am seeing the government initiative for make in india and all manufacturer indian manufacturer thanks the vendors also they bring the quality which is equivalent to the world quality earlier we used to say mnc we want import thing so now i am surprised many countries in fact from the tractor industry indian companies they become leader in some segment like number one number two player in many of the european country and you all guys aware about how the norms quality norms and standards are there for european country that shows the tractor industry not only given a growth in terms of number not even serve the farming community but they raise the standard towards automobile which many of you people are dealing or in the construction like one of my friend earlier worked in jcb the kind of brand where the quality is known now coming to the farming what uh, uh, my friend asked about the what are the practices changing see one big thing which i seen after working almost more than 20 year in this sector the farmer is not that typical farmers who have a without chapel and one banyan is there and he don't have money so although there are a marginal farmers who don't have money but the awareness because of internet penetration in rural it become very high and many of the customer of tractors they are the same buyer of the bike like honda hero or tvs or all any bajaj which is the now one of the superior quality bike in india they are also a buyer of cars which is having a very good standard so the same buyer who are buying car same buyer who are buying the bike same buyer buying the lg or samsung kind of brand for their households it means he getting experience he is not no unaware uh, kind of thing so that is the big change in consumer behavior happen in tractor industry and that helped us every company to make a quality standard in the product which i just now share that helped us to export the tractor outside which is a big opportunity which all my audience are listening coming to now from farmer angle i am saying the practices changes i used to visit nasik is the one market in maharashtra all of you heard wine those who know wine or those who are taking in the evening wine they know so there are there are almost 40000 compact tractor more than 40000 population is there and they are using now implement which is almost 18 to 19 lakh rupees one sprayer and tractor of 7 to 8 lakh which is 20 25 horsepower and many other such kind of equipment why their gross income if the season is good per acre 12 lakh they are now start growing the quality of grapes which is exporting to bangladesh china taiwan and all european country and they got a taste because of thanks to bombay because they are near to that they able to export the container they are start getting in a good season good crop so they push the companies for better quality of product and because their their exposure is very high for outside world same if you talk about the punjab there are farmers there is one farmer called sanga which is known as the one of the known farmer in the whole world having a more than 400 500 tractors and doing cultivation of potato and selling seed across india so they they change the practices they change the expectation of the product in the rural that bring a lot of change and they bring a prosperity in the that area like jalandhar and in and around that area so i mean to say there is a now shift is happening in agriculture if nasik farmer can earn 10 to 12 lakh has a gross income which 4 to 5 lakh you can say is expenses and net gain huge for per acre which earlier the farmer of haryana or punjab 
used to get a gross income of 1 lakh, which is, you can say, net saving of 40, 50,000 rupees per acre. So that is the shift happening in agriculture. So why I'm showing that picture, if this shift will happen, what is the international market or domestic market requirement of the crop and the need of food? So there will be a big jump in the income of the farmer. That is a possibility which government also pushing that. Then definitely, this industry have much more scope in future to grow further. Now I will come to last point, then we will give a time to other experts to uh, talk about that. The segment. See, many farm, I, many farm I attend, the people used to say, no, India farmer is small and marginal. How mechanization will happen? Yeah, they will, uh, debt will come on their head. Problem will be there. See, that is the one side of that actually picture, which definitely there will be few farmers. But I am seeing India as an opportunity because there are 18 agro-climate zone. Mean in India, you can grow anything. What is required for the whole world as well as for our need. That is the one opportunity. Another, we have decent sufficient water, which if we use the technology of drip irrigation and all, we have a sufficient resources of water across India available, which will help to for the growth of agriculture. Third, the segmentation, which I feel for marginal farmer, from my point of view, now farmer is looking solution, not a product. He is not looking a tractor now. He is looking what the drudgery is there, what are the labor and pain he is seeing or the cost he is seeing. If any technology will come and the place with easy way of working, with the low cost and fast working, he is adopting. So I mean to say that if you see the tractor industry, there will be a shift earlier in 30 years. I was talking with my friend just now before this session. We are only doing sowing with the tractor and harvesting with the tractor. In between, there are a lot of operations are there. You to putting a swelling of the crop. You have to put a spraying and pesticide to that. All is still happening manual. If you add that, that will further set a growth in this industry. So with end of this, my conversation, I would like to conclude this my discussion. Okay, this is a one part of that scope in India. Still, the mechanization in India is 35 to 40 percent. Potential is like US and UK kind of country, which is, or Japan, 80 to 90 percent. Still, a lot of penetration is required. So, there is a huge scope in the coming year because of movement of people from rural to urban, shortage of labor, and the young generation don't want to do hard work like earlier we, people used to do. This is going to bring a shift in that, actually. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Jujar, um, for pointing out deep opportunities here. Um, I'll move to Mr. Greval yourself. I think uh, uh, he started by describing how the consumer behavior is shifting and that the farmer is no longer the, the, the simple and naive farmer that uh, we used to have, right? Um, he's also spoken about uh, opportunities on the export side, on the domestic side, and specific places. Um, can you share your thoughts, uh, again, furthering on the opportunity piece? What will be the impact on the kind of products that we will sell, on the technologies that will come up, uh, whether it's only tractors, are we going to look at ag equipment, we're going to look at implements. So where do you think in the next five years the biggest opportunity going to realize? Thank you. Yeah, firstly, good morning to all. And I think, uh, firstly, I, let me say, I think it's a great opportunity to be meeting face to face. Because last two years we've been seeing each other only on a 13 inch screen. So to, to be here on a physical forum, I think it's a great thing. And as, as I understand, CVF basically stands for the uh, means commercial vehicle forum. No? And probably many of you are here from the commercial vehicle or construction equipment. So tractor industry probably may be new for some of the members. No? So as I think Mr. Jujar said, 900,000 tractors sold last financial year. I think it's not a small number. So, so that's the kind, and, and it is the biggest uh, tractor industry in the world we have in India. So which, which itself shows the resilience of this industry, uh, which we are all means uh, associated with. And the best thing is when the COVID came and most industries were dropping or struggling, the tractor industry was booming. 
So we had uh, in 2020 was one of the best years probably for the tractor industry. And we were trying to analyze what happened, what, what, what is the reason this industry is growing at such a pace. And then we found that the key reason was the focus on food. Uh, and uh, so when the COVID came, there was a lockdown, everybody else was at home. The only thing people were thinking about, where do I arrange food from? Uh, maybe everything else was secondary. And so, so then that's when I thought, I said, food never goes out of fashion. <laughs> Anything else can go out of fashion, but food never goes out of fashion. And I think this was further, uh, this thing was when, when recently we had a chance to visit the uh, World Expo at Dubai. And we were visiting some of the stalls. The biggest discussion happening in those th there is about food security. So everybody is talking about food security, food security, because many of the countries are importing 95% of their food from other countries. And you can understand when the, when the COVID stuck and the borders were getting closed, everybody was worried where do we get our food from. So, so that's the beauty of the industry, what we are here. I think Mr. Jal also talked about, we have the largest arable land, and we can not only feed our own country, we can even feed the world. So that's, that's where the importance of the Indian farmer comes in place. So now coming to the question uh, about the, uh, the customer's behavior. So I think Mr. Jujar also touched on that. <clears throat> the same customer goes and buys a car. His experience is probably very different. He gets a red, red carpet delivery and everything. Uh, probably we are not able to, we are not giving him the same experience in the tractor side. Because we, as we said, we, we always thought he's a farmer. But now I think that thought has totally changed in the, in the last few years. Uh, so, so, so we understand that the importance of the farmer for this industry and he should also be getting a similar experience if he is going to buy a vehicle or a, means an, an equipment, uh, he should have a similar experience. So I think the, the awareness level uh, of the farmer that he should be getting good service, a good product, good quality product, good technology. Uh, and also means uh, the uh, after sales support as well as the courtesy when, when the product is delivered. I think these are the important things which today's farmer is also looking at and, and companies have started to understand this point. Now coming to technology, uh, I always used to wonder, uh, we uh, mostly have two wheel drive tractors in India. Two wheel drive tractors means only the drive is in the, in the rear wheels. There is no drive, the front wheels are only for steering purpose. While across the world, the technology has changed to four-wheel drive. So mostly, even if you go to a, uh, countries like uh, Vietnam, Thailand, which are comparatively smaller countries, most of them using four-wheel drive tractors. Uh, so uh, I represent a company, Kubota, which is basically a Japanese uh, subsidiary of a Japanese company. So, so, uh, so when we inter initially introduced four-wheel drive tractors into India, and Nasik, incidentally, was one of our key markets for the grape vineyard owners, Initially, everybody said, this tractor will not sell in India. This is four-wheel drive. But I said, across the world, four-wheel drive is people are running. So, so I think now, uh, recently, we launched one product, and we found 40% of the demand was four-wheel drive. We were so surprised. So, so which means now the customer also trying to understand that four-wheel drive is important. So that's probably one shift uh, what you asked about customer, what he is thinking now. Customer is now thinking about better technology. So he has better awareness what's happening across the world. And the second thing is the fuel. So I think uh, the fuel prices have been going up uh, and probably we may get another shock soon. <laughs> so, uh, so the thing is uh, fuel efficiency becomes an important part. So when, when a customer is buying a product, he is looking at fuel efficiency. Uh, so, so technologies which are fuel efficient will be definitely the in thing in the future. Uh, so, so I think probably uh, all, all the manufacturers, we have to work towards more fuel efficiency products. Uh, the other, uh, I think the trend which we are able to see is, means uh, I think we were discussing about uh, better implements, means now, now the customer is not only thinking about tractor, because tractor is just a prime mover. Uh, it's important that what kind of equipment is uh, behind the tractor. So, so, so providing those kind of better equipment, so they are there spending. Uh, so like Mr. Jar also mentioned, maybe a tractor cost maybe just seven to eight lakh rupees, but he is putting a sprayer which is maybe 20 lakhs or more. 
So, so, so farmers are ready to now, they are ready to spend if they get good technology. And uh, so, so those kind of uh, expectations are there. So I think, I think we can really see uh, technology changing and probably this industry I expect will be resilient, means uh, even probably inflation will be one impact. But still I think as an industry we are always hopeful it's continue to grow at 7 to 8 CAGR in the future also. Yeah, so that's from my side, thank you. Well, um, that's really good to know that uh, we feel that in the future uh, more technologies, customers will be much more receptive to it, right? Uh, with that thought, let me just move on to um, uh, Dr. Rajan Yu. Um, it, I think uh, he gave us a few examples of uh, technologies and we heard about what are the kind of uh, customer expectations we have, what are the kind of farming practices we have, right? Um, you do a lot of work on that side, right, in terms of translating uh, customer needs into product technologies. So what's your view uh, beyond the technologies that Mr. Greval mentioned uh, around the four-wheeler side, on, on the implement side? Uh, what, where would you place your bets in the next four to five years? Uh, which are the technologies that can be the cure all for all uh, solutions, uh, if I may put it that way, right? So what would be your thoughts on that? Uh, thank you, Bhargav. Uh, good morning to all. I'm from uh, Central Mechanical Engineering Research Institute. Uh, where the first uh, indigenous tractor was designed and the team was moved to start the company Swaraj. Uh, the opportunities for a farm machinery industry, when I talk about the farm machinery industry, I consider it tractor plus implement because tractor can't work without implement. So there is a lot of opportunities in the coming years. Why it is happening, I just want to give you examples of that. Compared to other developed countries, we are far behind. Compared to developing countries like China and Brazil, also we are around 30 to 40 percent behind in the mechanization levels. How we check the mechanization level is basically the power availability in our fields, uh, um, in terms of kilowatt per hectare. Uh, government is pushing for uh, four kilowatt per hectare in the 2030. Currently, we are around uh, 2.25. So to achieve that, gap, there will be a lot of demand for tractors. Because tractors, power tillers, and pumps, these are the sector majorly contributing to the farm power. And all the uh, activities, um, I don't know uh, many, how many people know the activities involved in a crop production cycle. Uh, it is started from the uh, seedbed preparation, uh, tillage, then sowing or planting, then uh, intercultivation operation, sometimes earthing up operation fertilization, pesticide application, irrigation, then harvesting, then some in-situ post-harvesting operations. Except the first two, uh, that is the uh, seedbed preparation and the sowing, we don't have and harvest, uh, ex especially for uh, wheat and uh, rice, we have a good uh, mechanization levels in the harvest. But other than three activities, we don't have much presence in the mechanization. And this level is also different in different states. When you go down from the north, maybe Punjab, Haryana, and Western UP, to down, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, and other things, the mechanization levels are low. They are trying to pick up. India is a country where still, after 75 years of independence, 50 years of green revolution, we still do manual labor for planting, animal energy for uh, tillage, planting, intercultural operations. So there is a huge opportunity to take up the gap in the initial next years. But the only challenge is, uh, when we, almost everybody is talking about the Atmanir Bharda, we make uh, in India, we have uh, some Atmanir Bharda in uh, tractor, almost Atmanir Bharda in tractor, but compared to the equipment side, we are, we need to go lot of miles, because the talk of the 18 lakhs or 20 lakhs machine, no OEMs making in India. It is imported from outside. So when we will start making that sort of implement in India and supplying with our tractors, then this industry will boom further. And coming up the two, three years, uh, I, I, I felt thanks to our Indian farmers, their resilience. It is actually the resilience of 
Indian farmers. That gives the boom to the tractor industry uh, during the COVID period. And their uh, enthusiasm to shift to new technologies, to try out new variants, because they are not getting enough equipment for doing most of the uh, operations. And what happens, uh, irrespective of other things, uh, when you look into the uh, activity in agriculture, the peak labor demand comes. Uh, then the farmer is uh, searching for the labor. He doesn't get the labor. For example, harvesting season. Harvesting season of any crop uh, have a peak labor demand. So to cope up this demand, the only solution is farm mechanization with a uh, optimized combination of equipment. So maybe uh, the last uh, three to five years, there is a lot of changes happening in our uh, uh, tractor industry and the agriculture machinery industry. This will continue and uh, maybe new players will come. The, uh, a lot of uh, foreign players are already started uh, taking up uh, uh, business in India to offer new products in uh, agriculture equipment. Also OEMs, like uh, almost all, all OEMs now offer agriculture equipment as a standard part with tractors. So it will, it will make the business grow further. The farmer will get a complete solution. And the current digitization or the data generation and the precision farming focus of the government of India and uh, almost all agriculture universities will give a further impetus to the ongoing demand of tractors. Maybe this year the demand may be little low, but further next year, the coming years, it will grow further. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, since we are on this topic of technology and, and you very clearly kind of emphasized on uh, the ag equipment that will actually help bolt, boost or, and realize the opportunity of the tractor side as well. I was hoping to hear a lot of, lot of uh, stuff around precision farming. Uh, so that's a topic that uh, you want to speak about. I mean, we hear about a um, lot of precision farming having a lot of potential. But I think uh, it'll be interesting to know um, what we think practically can happen, right? What kind of innovation is possible? with respect to precision farming, what are the kind of challenges? And practically, what should we expect to see in the next four to five years? Uh, as far as precision farming in its real sense considered, it is not a uh, technology, it's a management strategy. Management strategy means uh, when you uh, use any inputs, uh, like uh, energy in the form of farm power, or labor, seeds, fertilizers, uh, chemicals, and uh, uh, other things, even water. How to optimize each of these inputs so that uh, the yield potential from uh, uh, each acreage of farm can be increased. That is a management strategy. To develop this management strategy, what is required is the data. Uh, everybody is known that, everybody is worried about the data. So to, to generate in our Indian farms, 150 million hectares farms, to generate that kind of data, and convert that data, analyze it, recommend something to be applied in the field. It is closing the cycle of precision farming. But unfortunately, uh, our equipments are not so precise in application. Our efficiency of uh, farm equipments still needs a lot of improvement in its design to further apply it as a precision agricultural equipment. Uh, however, the study is happening in uh, our universities and more focus is coming from the uh, uh, government of India in uh, uh, sponsoring projects uh, in the agri-mechanization area. Uh, recently, um, government of India gave a project of 100 crores to IIT Robert to start something of this kind, to how to optimize the different inputs going into your farm. So this will come into picture when farmer is also uh, realize can, we, can I get some return if I invest in these technologies? Uh, earlier, when, uh, around five years back, when we talk about the precision farming, then the opposing argument was that uh, in India, we have 50% uh, uh, acreage is under small and marginal farmers, uh, contributing around 85% of our farmers. So our field is very small. So we are doing a precision farming, because farmer know uh, his farm, if when there is any variation, then he can do the management accordingly. But unfortunately, the studies by Mahindra and Mahindra and myself uh, in uh, searching out the variation in our fields, 
clearly shows that there is a variation in the input requirement. You can say input requirement means if you can increase the seed side, you can decrease the fertilizer. Sometimes what the farmers do, they over apply the fertilizer. Two things they every time over apply, the one is the seed, fertilizer and chemicals. Because they don't want to take any risk. Because uh, when we apply uh, 100 kg or 110 kg of uh, wheat seed in per hectare, uh, the thinking is that uh, the plant population will come uh, as per the requirement. But it can be further reduced with uh, our precision application equipment. That has to be maybe, uh, I always request industry, uh, I am in constant touch with the agricultural machinery manufacturers, that uh, they should improve the designs of uh, uh, their technology in the application side. Because whenever it comes into mechanization, it is always the application side machinery is important. Uh, harvesting is not an application equipment, but when we harvest, I don't know uh, how many of you, everybody is uh, uh, knowing that we have uh, 300 million tons of uh, uh, cereals ground last year. Uh, but it is a uh, data coming from the satellite data. It is uh, maybe some ground truthing can happen, but uh, the same combined harvester can customized so that we can get, get data from the Indian fields itself, which can use for further optimizing the application inputs. So there is a challenge. It is not a that's why it's not a job of uh, R and D institutions or uh, state agriculture universities, but the industry also come forward to uh, hold hands so that we can help the farmers to reap the benefits of the technology transition. We are used to the conventional technologies, the developed countries used maybe be before 1990s. Because 90s and 2000, uh, the developed countries moved to some kind of precision farming. Not, the, not a single technology has been put into practice in India till now. Maybe in the coming next four to five years, some of the technology will come into picture. And uh, when it comes, the, I don't know about tractor industry's uh, strategy, but uh, in the agricultural machinery strategy is that nobody, no player wants to put new equipment in the field, uh, risking the market demand. Once, once the uh, farmer picks up the equipment from, from uh, demonstrations of uh, different agencies, then only the other players will start manufacturing. So there is a tendency of the, this manufacturer is to go for a specific product which the only the market demands rather than do some in-house R&D. They need to do some in-house R&D to put new equipment so that the operation of time, you will be surprised that only around 500 hours is of the tractor is used in Indian uh, farms. 500 hours in a year. So we need to increase that uh, operation time to maybe around 800 hours. That is only possible if we have a proper equipment. All right. So um, thanks for pointing that out. I think in general, uh, in the industry, we're seeing that players are realizing the power of collaboration, like you spoke about, I mean, institutes and kind of industry coming together. Similarly, it's happening with the startup ecosystem. I think uh, a lot of solutions are coming from there. So I'm hopeful uh, in the next four to five years, uh, there will be collaboration on this bit. and. Uh, precision farming will, will kind of bloom and provide the benefits the way you kind of articulated. Um, changing gears a little bit, uh, I think Mr. Grewal, you spoke about fuel efficiency uh, being one of the, uh, the key elements uh, that is important for the farmers, right? And with that, I'd like to move to uh, Mr. Basu yourself. Um, I think you have a lot of experience uh, on the powertrain side, on the emission side, and uh, so we would like to hear your views. I mean, you've heard the market side of things. You've heard the customer perspective. Uh, we heard some bit uh, in terms of the te technologies and the equipment that will be kind of needed to fully realize the market potential, right? Uh, but again, there are regulations, emission norms, which, I mean, bump up the cost. Um, it, it, it's also one side of the challenge uh, that we have from an industry perspective. So what are your thoughts in terms of how the powertrain of the future could look like, keeping, let's say, fuel efficiency being one of the objectives, meeting the emission norms being one of the objectives. We're talking about electric vehicle, electric tractors, right? So uh, with all of that, what do you think is the future of powertrain looking like in the next four to five years? 
Uh, <clears throat> good morning to all of you. And uh, first of all, I must thank uh, Threefold for uh, giving me this opportunity. Uh, coming from the emissions control and after treatment industry, uh, we seem to be uh, uh, a little bit out of place amongst uh, your tractor and commercial vehicle manufacturers. And uh, not commercial vehicle, construction uh, machinery manufacturers. Uh, when I talk of emissions, uh, I am reminded about that uh, venerable uh, actor, Jean-Paul Belmondo, in a movie in which he's sitting in a, uh, in a racing car. And he says, uh, uh, what is the behind the me is not important. And he breaks off the uh, uh, rear view mirror and throws it behind him. Now, here, when coming to tractors, the, uh, the exhaust is either on top or maybe for construction equipment at the side. But having said that, uh, maybe it would appear to you that emissions are not so important. But then, uh, since the world is moving to a cleaner environment, uh, cleaner and cleaner fuels and technologies, fortunately for us, we have the emissions control industry, which looks after the emissions, the exhaust emissions. And uh, we have, as uh, we just uh, heard, uh, the technologies. And I'll, here I'd like to touch upon three uh, I would say important issues. One is the technology, and the other is the costs, and the third, the aftermarket and the service requirements, etc. Coming to technologies, the uh, <coughs> uh, off-highway or the tractor uh, is, uh, industry is uh, fortunate to have uh, commercial vehicle industry in the lead, and uh, most of us emission controls. In fact, all of us have the technologies already established in terms of uh, after treatment uh, that has already been used, tried, and tested. There are, of course, differences because of the application. And here is where I would like to uh, 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 talk about a few things. The applications, as somebody just pointed out, when you're selling a passenger car, you have uh, a red carpet rolled out for the passengers and uh, for the customers. And you have a different kind of treatment because the customer has a different profile. When you come to the tractor industry or the construction business, the customer has a different profile. So, so with that, then the 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 type of application that you are going to going to have to use here, the type of customer who's going to buy it and use it is different, and therefore your application, the technology, has to be capable of standing up to the rigors of this use, and that is where you have uh, some kind of uh, limitation because of which I think the industry has been uh, successful in, has been asking for, has been successful in in having the emission regulations postponed uh, by, I think, uh, more than a year now. Uh, having said that, technologies do exist. Technology is not just for the conversion requirements, but also for the durability and uh, uh, the performance of the after treatment in the field. This brings us to an important point, and that is the cost, because uh, uh, as we heard my friend uh, talking about the profile of the farming having changed from uh, one who seemed to be uh, wanting of funds. Here we have farmers who, I, I remember an incident in Aurangabad, when a farmer comes to a, a dealership of a very, very, very uh, high-end uh, uh, car company and says, I mean, that's the, that's the level of, uh, uh, well, the, the change that is taking place in the, the, uh, the profile of the the uh, users over here. So the cost still uh, is important. And here then, uh, the, the uh, fortunate part is that while the technology exists, the unfortunate part is the raw materials for after treatment are still materials which have to come from abroad because the, uh, the conversion has to rely on platinum, palladium, which are all sourced from uh, outside and uh, uh, as we know, the prices of these uh, commodities are going up and down. And with the current geopolitical situation, uh, who knows where the prices of palladium are going to touch. So here is something where the manufacturers of after treatment have to be very, very competent to be able to cut down on costs by increasing the efficiency of the, uh, the uh, after treatment system so that the minimum amount of extensive precious metal are used. And these are technologies 
that come into the, the, the wash coat or the preparation of the, the catalyst that is made. And this is where our, our, our member companies have uh, competencies in. And I'll say that, that even the OEM uh, who manufacture tractors, like my friend here, uh, Yujar, uh, they have been working on technologies on the engine side using electronics in the fuel injection system, using various way, means of uh, uh, positioning the after treatment as well as heating up the exhaust so that the more simple after treatment systems are capable of giving tractors the emissions uh, for uh, the, the control requirements for meeting tier four norms. That has also been achieved. The last part I'd like to touch upon is the, the end user and the, the sophistication that is required to be able to use this equipment. As we know now in the, 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 the tractor industry, as well as the construction uh, uh, equipment industry, turbocharging, electronic fuel control, and now after treatment is going to become standard. This means that the end user needs to be able to be more competent, more, uh, more uh, uh, let's say, uh, attentive of the way the equipment is used. And fortunately for us, as we heard in the last session, the, uh, the younger generation that is coming up is more and more adept at absorbing new technologies. And I am hopeful that as we move from uh, TREM 4 to TREM 5, where in TREM 5 where more and more of sophisticated after treatment, after treatment will have to come, we will have the, uh, the uh, uh, knowledge and the competences built into the customers, uh, of course, with the support of both the after treatment manufacturers as well as the uh, OEM manufacturers for tractors to be able to use this equipment effectively and in a durable manner in the field. Uh, with that, maybe I think I would answer that question. All right. Uh, thank you for that view. And I think uh, you connected some of the thoughts with uh, how the customers are going to be there in the future and, and linked uh, the technology to the supply chain aspects as well. I mean, that actually, um, uh, tempts me to move to uh, Mr. Sridhar. Uh, Mr. Sridhar, um, two parts of questions for you, right? One is, uh, I think he mentioned about uh, the after treatment technologies and the materials, etc., that will be required for it, right? I mean, to me, it sounded that uh, specialized uh, uh, material that will be required, right? So any, any reactions you want to share on that? Uh, and then the other part is where uh, we want to hear your thoughts is, um, because we've been saying, we've been talking about how the customer will be there, what opportunities will be there, right? But I think supply chain has to fulfill that. And, and um, with all the recent past, I think we've been saying, seeing that supply chain has been going through a number of disruptions. Uh, like I was mentioning in the morning, disruptions have become more regular uh, than really being disruptions, right? So we'd like to, to, uh, like to hear from you uh, in terms of... Um, what is the supply chain of the future looking like to you uh, in this context, right? With the kind of technologies that we are supposed to put in there, with the kind of customer changes that are coming in there, right? Customers are getting, wanting a better and better experience. And, and then that's a, how, what role or what shape of the future that you see for supply chain? Thank you. Thank you, Rahul. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. So before I start and uh, we discuss on the supply chain. I just want to understand how many uh, from the audience are from supplier, partners, or the vendor side. Just to, okay, so almost 100%. Uh, That's interesting. Quite a lot. So thank you. And uh, so before I go in the sourcing model on the challenges, what we have, but if we see the uh, eminent speakers, Mr. Vick, Mr. Grewal, Mr. Ranjan, Mr. Vashu, they talks about the customer trend, how trend is changing. The discussion was more on the new technology are coming, whether we talk about the precision forming, whether we talk about the new mission norms, bringing a very complicated components to the product, ATS or one thing. And customer expectation, what Mr. Greval was sharing, that how trend is moving from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive. So things are changing every day. 
And if, if we see last two years with the pandemic, I think as India, as India suppliers, uh, the way we responded during this pandemic to the whole industry, whether we talk about so off-highway, on-highway industry, it has been a commendable task, I would say. And thank you for that. You've done a great job and in fact, uh, I've seen, if I talk about the Europe and North America or Latin, Latin America, still supply chain is struggling to reach up to a certain level. Now what challenge we have, whether we talk about the off highway, whether we talk about the commercial vehicle or passenger cars, today we talk about the semiconductors, right? This is stopping everybody. This is holding our growth, right? So semiconductor is one aspect, but if we talk about, if go one level below, if we talk about the other electronics, electrical components, I think still we are not there. Still we are very, very much dependent on other countries. They may be very small countries, but yes, they are much ahead. Still we are able, we are working, we are managing ourselves within the, say, metallic category, which is out of steel, or pig iron, or the forging castings. So still we remain over there, and we are not improving, and this is very, very important. If we talk about that we are number one in two-wheeler, on passenger car, we have very great numbers. We just listen, 900,000 tractors are getting produced. So it means the base is very, very high, but still we don't have that kind of a technology, we don't have that kind of a supplier base, we are not over there, and this is needed. And this is stopping us. This is putting a question mark on our growth plan. So from the supply chain as a technology, I think this is one area where we need to continuously work on that. The second is, if we talk about the inflation, what is happening today in the market? Every product, every commodity is now getting traded. There is a geopolitical issue, and suddenly we see the whole commodity is uh, increasing like anything. Nothing has changed in India. Right? No input cost has gone up in the last 10 days. In fact, if you are importing anything from Ukraine or Russia, probably it will take a couple of months to reach here, right? With the additional cost. But if you see here, already inflation has gone up. So this is not an inflation actually. This is a opportunity cost what we are building over here. So we are changing our business model. And I think this is important. We need to see whether this kind of inflation is affordable. If it is not affordable, we will not have sustainability. And if we talk about that customers are looking better product, they are looking more uh, uh, advanced product, if they are not only focusing on tractor, they are looking implementation, we need to see how we are going to be cost competitive as India. If we will keep on working on the opportunity side, probably it will be challenging for us to uh, keep our growth momentum. For sure, India is a vast country and we will keep on feeding more machines, more equipments, more two-wheelers, more passenger cars, will get consumed, but then we have to tap other markets as well. Looking at the freight cost, logistic cost, especially the containers and the vessel cost, the way cost is going high, we will be uncompetitive, we will not control our cost. So I think this is one of the bundling issues what we have today and we need to keep on working. We need to work on the cost plus model, rather we keep on working on the trading model. This is important. We need to work more on the advanced technology, on the new components, like ATS. Uh, Mr. Vasu, this is something we are still, as a country, still we are struggling. There may be a few uh, manufacturers in India, but there could be opportunity. We can optimize. And when I entered, I saw the presentation was uh, from Bharat Forge, and they talked about, there, there was a question that is still we are importing lot of uh, track and rollers from the Korea and China. Now what is great in that? If they are getting produced out of the steel, why we can't produce in India? So I think when we talk about that, if somebody, and in fact uh, yesterday I was having a meeting with my leadership, uh, global leadership team, and there was a discussion that if somebody need to have a software development, India is the best place, right? And we are serving the uh, entire world. But when we talk about the component development, I think still there are many technologies where we are not tapping, and we need to work on that.
Today, if construction market, if you see, if they are producing close to 45 or 50,000 uh, backhoe loaders, or if he talks about the whole construction, close to 100,000 excavators plus other construction equipment that they are producing. So there is a huge opportunity. And when he talks about the components for the dozer or excavators or the other components, so uh, or, or for other category, there is huge opportunity. And these are some of the areas where we need to tap. We need to work on that. That only we will be able to sustain. Today, our growth is mostly dependent on the what we are importing from other countries. What we are producing here in India, capacity is available. And I think we are very, very much agile as Indian, right? That's our DNA. So if something needed within country, we can do. But something what we are importing is going to be a roadblock for us. So my request and submission to everybody, let us focus on those categories, those technologies. And probably uh, we can be uh, more Atmanirbhar. We should focus more on Make in India program, and that's how we will be able to do And my request is let us not take trading as an opportunity to keep on increasing our cost. We will not be competitive. We will not be competitive where we will go at the next level. If we want to do the BCC sourcing or global sourcing to other countries, to, to Europe or to US, we, know, we need to be competitive, right? As CNS, we do close to $100 million export every year. But our inflation will keep on increasing. If every year we keep on increasing 10%, 10% cost increase, I think we will be out of the market, right? Because then somebody will do this task. So, so these are the aspects from the technology point of view where we need to focus. Some of the aspects from the inflation point of view we need to focus. And as so far passenger car reached up to a certain level from the innovation point of view, and now as with the new emission norms coming, tractor and the construction equipment, they are also becoming more and more electronics. And this is bringing a great opportunity for everybody. So let us tap it and let us see how we can utilize it. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for uh, um, turning the challenges question into a very positive, optimistic note, right? How we need to come together to kind of address this. Um, I think we, we're, we're about time uh, from the, for this session, so I'll just uh, uh, summarize from from the discussion standpoint. I think there are two, three key themes that I am I'm, I'm taking away from here. I think I think everybody unanimously spoke about that there is enough potential out there in the market. Both we spoke about the domestic market as well as the export potential, right? So I think that is that is clearly the case. Uh, what we also heard is that uh, some of this opportunity to capture that, I think we need to get to the right kind of innovation or technology, whether it is about ag equipment, whether it's about implement, whether it's about improvising the design. And and, and I think the last part of the, the discussion which focused on the technology as well as the supply chain piece hints that uh, cost, being cost competitive is going to be a challenge, right? So while opportunity is there, I think uh, focusing on the right kind of technology, innovation, at the right level of cost uh, is going to be the, the, the key way in which I think we should look at uh, the next four to five years to be. So with that, um, I would uh, kind of uh, pause uh, this discussion. We would love to go ahead, but I think uh, uh, we have the paucity of time. Uh, but let me just open uh, to a few questions. We can take two or three questions if uh, someone has. Uh, I see a hand over there coming up. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Hemant from uh, Bullock Mobility. Uh, I have a specific question to Mr. Uh, Jujar Singh, sir. Uh, see, we, we talked a lot about agriculture, the issues facing the farmers and uh, everything, right? But the, the biggest issue, what we have found, is uh, the operational cost to run an implement, right? Buying an implement is one aspect, whereas running is another thing. So what are the steps that you feel are required to bring down the cost of operation? And, and I know that electric, going electric is one of the big uh, ways in that. And Sonalika has been, I, I would say, the first like uh, first company in India to introduce an electric tractor and go down that road, but then it kind of went away. They just wanted to understand where where is it and what is happening in that sector. Yeah, thank you uh, for giving me opportunity to answer. 
So if I understand from you, your question, you want to how to bring down the cost of operation for agriculture from farming point of view. Is it right? Yeah. So what I'm uh, looking, I already told there are opportunity uh, in India because I think it's a God soil, India, where all kind of climates are there. Water availability is there, okay, with the precision uh, and drip irrigation and all, we can serve that, pro uh, that problem, we can solve over a period through technology. I am seeing, uh, after working all the solution, because in my previous assignment in Karnataka, when I was in Bangalore, I will talk about Karnataka, with my personal experience there, I run three years like a farmer. One assignment was their custom hiring center. Karnataka government put to us, you set up a 70 center and ensure the cost, cost of operation of farmers should come down. There will be a Hubli, used to call a place, where 50, 40 villages are there. And you set up the complete implements and tractors and give at a price like Ola is giving at a controlled price over a normal uh, travel agency, which can charge anything, but Ola is the transparent. Whatever charging they are doing is uh, open to everyone. So like that, they fix a cost, which is 70% of the market cost of rental. So there we, I personally learn a lot of things. Now I'm talking about other side of the picture actually. One side is manufacturer side. Okay, yes, it is very difficult if you calculate all the cost and you invest full end to end for a farmer, which is a marginal kind of that and make a sustainable business. Yes, it is a challenge. I'm talking about that business. First year was loss of two crore. Second year was some 50 lakh loss to company I'm talking about. We as a farmer work like at in that center. And now is on break even basically. And even all farmers are paying upfront. They no default of farmer side. So I will not blame farmers. So because of fuel cost, because many cost input costs are there. So I am seeing for India the solution which earlier one forum also I told. Uh, see, we have a two challenge. <clears throat> one, we need a low cost mean government thinking, if we'll put a custom hiring center and serve 55 villages. If I have to sowing a wheat, I'm talking about north point of view. If I will sow a wheat on 15th of October to 30th of October, my yield is X. If I'll move to 1st November to 15th of November, my yield is 0.8 of X. If I move from 15th November onward, my yield may be half. So what is the critical thing? The sowing window, any crop, actually. So now for sowing window in 15 days, everyone need a tractor. That is the ideal situation. If a hundred farmer there, everyone want to do a sowing on first 15th October to 30th October, 31st October, whatever the time is there. First 15. So which is impossible. So what is the solution which now government is also pushing? We have to make a, which our company, including Sonalika, our group, we are so trying that. So we segment, did a segmentation in our portfolio, which I am doing now country as a strategy role also. We should have a one solution, which is every house have a bike to do mobility to go nearby. But if I want to go Punjab or want to go Madhya Pradesh, Bhopal or Jaipur, I need a Nova, I need a better vehicle, safe vehicle. So we have to divide mechanization two part. I need a one solution which is one and a half to two, two and a half lakh compact tractor, which every farmer should have. Government of course should support him for initial buying, give a lower rate of interest, loan and all. Two and a half, three lakh rupees, which we also worked, we put a single cylinder 20 HP tractor. We made a 22 HP tractor, 24 HP. Now recently, I was in Maharashtra last month, so I met some farmer personally also to just understand consumer behavior. So we launch one product. In fact, when we say we launch, I'm not talking about Sonalika, sorry. I'm talking about the on behalf of all our manufacturer of tractor. Everyone launch, not we only launch. Everyone launch one segment, 30 to 35 horsepower. And when I met farmer to weld it, he said my whole work is finishing with that. Only one or two operation, I need a custom hiring. 
like if I have to level the land, I need maybe laser leveler for two days. But my regular work from end to end, this tractor 30, 35 horsepower and 25 horsepower is serving my purpose. So I feel which I am seeing, there are many products will come which will be at ticket size of 2 lakhs to 4 lakh in between which will every farmer has to keep if he have to be in the farming choice is his. otherwise he have to move to urban and con little consolidation will happen there will be hubs which are technology hub government is also pushing it where harvester will be available where laser leveler will be available high end equipment will be available mr garewal was talking about four wheel drive technology which may not every farmer afford now so which is a ticket size of whole set of end to end 25 to 30 lakh rupees or government is putting FEO also, young farmers, young people are coming in that. So they will create it, that will serve their one or two days and special need. Regular work, which I my bike and at home, you can correlate with that. I have to go to take a subject. Operation of cost will come down. And of course, when he'll take a compact or small tractor or 30 HP mid-segment product, he will not do for only for him, because that is the nature of our rural India. Any farmer, either he's doing custom hiring or not doing formally, he not put a board, I'm doing custom hiring. His neighbor, his uncle, chacha, mama, all will take a tractor. To mean four and five farmers are using that machine and implement in that, based on, based on social comfort. It's not based on some business point of view. So that's the way it will work. I hope uh, I given a, I hope I justify to give an answer to you on your query. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jujar. Uh, uh, any other question, please? Okay. That one at the end. Uh, the gentleman at the end. Uh, hi. Uh, my name is Chanjal Prakash. I'm from Tata Lexi. Uh, actually, we have spoken a lot about consumer behavior here, uh, where uh, the consumer is actually understanding the trends, uh, understanding the technology. Uh, that is because uh, that's a generation called 90s kids who is now in the market, now in the business, including me. Uh, so they, uh, is that, that's a generation who uh, see the evolution of technology, right, from the trunk, trunk calling. Now they are using the smartphones. <coughs> now uh, there is another generation, the smartest generation coming up, uh, who has seen the smartphone, using the smartphone right after they're born. They're known as uh, the generation alpha. They are the generation who started using uh, the Siri and Alexa to switch on the fans and the lights. So they are the generation who consider experience as a luxury rather than the products. So even uh, uh, Mr. Singh has told about people are looking for solution rather than the products. So are we really uh, equipped to uh, address this generation since this generation will be out in the market in a couple of years? Are we uh, really ready to uh, address this gen um, generation of the uh, kids who will be uh, owners of the business, who will be the farmers, They'll be in every sectors. And uh, are, are the OEM manufacturers of the tractors ready to increase the yield of the production, considering the arable uh, land uh, cannot be expanded anymore? And we need to uh, consider the importance of the food as well. So that's a general question to everyone. All right. Uh, Mr. Grewal, you want to take this one? Yeah, so I think uh, important question. So. Uh, I represent uh, in a Japanese MNC, so I had a chance to go to Japan and see how the agriculture is being done there. And probably what you said is exactly right. The, the new generation, everybody shifting to the urban areas. So most of the farmers in Japan are 60 plus. Senior citizens are doing the agriculture there. So the only solution they have is uh, using mechanization. Uh, and mechanization doesn't mean just tractors. Mechanization means uh, using even for planting paddy, Paddy is the key, key crop, paddy transplanters, then they need something to do the spraying or pesticide and finally the harvesting. Uh, so, so again, I think what uh, Mr. Jujar mentioned, uh, custom hiring centers have been evolved there. So you can see the kind of future which, which we could be moving towards at some point. Uh, but probably that's not what we would like to do. We would not like only old people doing agriculture. So, so keeping the young generation interested in agriculture is extremely important. You know? so, so, 
So I think uh, the thing is how to make uh, agriculture more glamorous <laughs> or make it more uh, user-friendly, easy to use. Uh, I think that will be the important part. I think you have seen recently there has been a trend where drones have started coming into agriculture. Uh, so because of course mechanization, in, uh, uh, the, the mechanization part between sowing and harvesting is still not fully done. So pesticide spraying uh, and other things are still not. So drones have come in. So there is a discussion about uh, smart farming. Uh, there is also a discussion about going on probably in the future instead of tractors, maybe robots, swarm of robots will be doing the farming. So, so I think uh, these things will definitely be interesting going forward. And I think now many startups have started working. So I think India is now a startup country. We have, uh, I recently was saying almost 60,000 startups uh, have been uh, registered. And out of that 200 are in, uh, in uh, drone, uh, for drone farming. So you can understand now this interest of the younger generation coming towards developing something new for agriculture also. So, so I think that is one way. I think when we involve the younger generation to bringing in solutions for the farming side, I think uh, one is of course they will be involved directly and they, they may be come out with much more innovative solutions which we all need and, and probably be one of the driving factors and, and, and maybe bring out solutions which are more younger generation friendly, uh, which, is, which is like really they, they love to use, maybe people love to work with drones, love to work with maybe robotic uh, things or maybe such kind of things. I think, I think that could be another way going forward. So, so definitely I think it's important thing, maybe we have to maybe think about it more deeply to keep involved the younger generation into agriculture. Otherwise, we may be just ending with senior citizens just doing farming, which is not a great trend. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Rahul, Thank you. maybe Thank I you, can, Mr. Rahul, I can add further on this. Yeah, please. So, uh, this is very interesting. It is a chicken and egg story, actually. So, for sure, if we see uh, as individual in our personal life, Affordability is also equally important, right? So every farmer, when he is working in summer or rainy or winter season, definitely he is also looking at some sort of a support system where he can be more effective in his business as a farmer, right? Other, he is also doing something to make money. The point is, uh, whatever we talk about, like a different uh, attachment, implements, if we will be able to localize them, if we will be able to optimize the cost, if they will be affordable to the customer, definitely there will be a huge opportunity for them. Right? So whether we talk with the drone, drone we can have, but if we will keep on importing the drones, hardly few customers will be there. But if we can have the frugal development in India, many will be there. Once upon a time, I remember when I started my career or during initial time, we used to have a very special mobile phone. Siemens, right? A very big one. And if somebody is holding the mobile phone, means uh, he is a special person. Now everybody is having a smartphone. Everything is within that phone, right? So it's affordability, innovation, what we bring. I think disruption needed in this area. And that will help. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think uh, we have run out of time now, so won't be able to take any more questions. Uh, but thank you for being uh, such a wonderful audience and thank you, thank you to all the panelists. I think we had a very wide spectrum of experience and thoughts that were shared here. So I think I can vividly see in front of me how the future of tractor industry looks like. Hopefully the same uh, has been for you as well. Back to the CVF team. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, can we please uh, show our gratitude to the gentlemen on the stage for sharing their wisdom with us?